Here we are. How you guys doing? Hi, everybody. How's it going today? It's Bruce here, traveling with Bruce. Let's see if the signal's coming through. Uh, we are alive and we are well. How are you all? Uh, today is August the 3rd, Friday, August the 3rd, 2018. Holy moly macaroni. Well into the eighth month of the year. <laughs> Incredible. Um, here in uh, Calgary, uh, shower activity uh, off and on. We've got warm weather, but we have unpredictable weather now where uh, we get these flare-ups and uh, we get a little bit of hail and then we get some rain. And what can I say? It's, uh, it's kooky, it's wacky, it's crazy, it's, uh, it's August. And uh, other than that, though, we're surviving. It's not too hot and it's not too wet. Mr. Stinky is here and he's yapping away. Bring Mr. Stinky over here. He hasn't been on the air yet. Let's see if I can get Mr. Stinky to show his uh, mug to the world. Are you ready to see Mr. Stinky? Here he comes. Maybe, maybe. Hey, buddy. Hey, pal. How are you doing? How's it going? Yeah. You see his, you see his ear? So there he is. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Here. Yeah. Yeah. You want to you wanna say hi to anybody? There you go. There you go. Can you see? There we go. I'll get you in there. There we go, Mr. Stinky. There you are. Yeah. His real name is Otto, but nobody calls him Otto. We refer to him as Mr. Stinky, and he loves getting his chin rubbed. Although he, sometimes he'll be distracted, and then he'll, he'll come back and get his chin rubbed. He likes that. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing there, bud? Hey? Yeah. He's the quiet one. He really is. He's a big, he's big, 17 plus pounds, but he's quiet. Yeah. And he loves being, uh, he loves the affection. Yeah. Right? All right. Okay. Well, there you go. That's the third one. <laughs> he is uh, very affectionate in the evening when we're trying to get some sleep. He likes to come into the bed and uh, kind of lie around with us and uh, purr away all night long and uh, during the day, sleep, eat and sleep, and then purr at night. What can I say? Anyway, there you go. Uh, <laughs> we are cat sitting, and uh, we're uh, we're done on the weekend. We're just debating when to go home. We're uh, trying to figure out whether we can get back on Sunday, so I'll be on the air Monday, uh, or whether we commute on the Monday. And I'd rather be home by then. But uh, we'll 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 see what happens, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. In the meantime, here we are. It's Friday, August the third. Welcome to the show, uh, 2,400 and about 88 subscribers. I think we're 10 or 12 away from 2,500. So we're moving in on the number, fantastic. And uh, nine days from now, it's a uh, one-year anniversary for this channel. And thanks to you guys uh, keeping me going and keeping me, uh, keeping me coming back for more. So thank you, everybody. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, I think uh, I think uh, Robert Brandt is on an airplane today, heading for Arizona. I think he's going for his uh, his flight to, uh, uh, sorry, his 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 uh, his uh, river cruise. Uh, I think with uh, isn't it with with Viking? So he's coming up to that. So we'll see if we hear from him once he's on the uh, on the boat, and uh, he'll let us know how that's going. Uh, in the meantime, let's see who else is here and how everyone's doing today. Uh, Peter Heckema signed in first today saying, hi, Bruce, uh, and all finally a morning and afternoon without rain, uh, sunny and 92 degrees in Tarpon Springs, Florida. When are you headed home from Calgary? Just just reading my mind where well, Jen and I are discussing that kind of now. We're sort of trying to figure it out. We'll, we'll probably know by tomorrow what we're going to do. Wendy Thompson, uh, hi, uh, hi, 86. Um, uh, no rain today. Uh, we were in Ocala. Um, hello, everyone. Hi, Bruce. Thumbs up, folks. Hi, Wendy Thompson from Ocala, Florida. <laughs> I know she lives nearby, just in the area of Ocala, but I refer to it as Ocala. And Jordan, uh, good morning, Bruce and all. It's 26 Celsius in Brisbane. How are y'all doing? Doing pretty good here. Um, I'm glad uh, you looks like you're doing great there. Uh, morning, Peter and Wendy. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, everyone's saying hi to everybody else here. Uh, Tom Henry's here. Hi, Peter and Ann. Uh, Tom Henry's telling me it's 82 and a bit brighter here in uh, Richmond. So hopefully things are lightening up a little bit. Uh, not so much rain. Wendy Thompson, good day, Ann and Peter. We're in town. Uh, we were in town Walmart shopping. Yay. Uh, yeah, sometimes you must do it. Tom Henry, uh, Ann, I'm waiting for the expected question. Laugh out loud. Uh, um, Tom Henry, uh, except I'm, I messed it up. It, I sh it should have been hi, Ann, Peter, Wendy, and John. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> They're all there. They're all talking to each other. They're all good. Tracy Dunlop, hi, Bruce and all. 78 Fahrenheit, raining. 
uh, thundering and lightning right now in Naples. Overcast all day. Rain started. <laughs> Rain started a couple of hours ago. I had a sneeze coming. I just couldn't stop it. Um, fantastic. Rain started. Sorry to hear, but you know, dust free. But what are you going to do, uh, Tracy? Welcome to the show. Stay dry. Um, Wendy Thompson wanted to. Uh oh, <laughs> I got one on the edge, folks. Wendy Thompson wanted to get a jump on trivia. Not that I have any trivia today, but she's going to Tokyo. Uh, she's just going right at Tom Henry. Welcome, Tracy. Did you get Robert off okay? Uh, <clears throat> Tom Henry, second star on the right and straight on till morning. And Jordan, okay. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, Wendy Thompson, we ate lunch at Fat Boy's Barbecue today. Beans, good. Coleslaw, uh, pork, great chicken. I go pork next time. <laughs> I'll try some advice there for us. Um, uh, uh, Tracy Singh, as far as I know, Robert Robert's uh, on his way to uh, Amsterdam. Uh, fantastic. Tom Henry, I guess after the shocker last night, we don't have to worry about his twins visiting the red, <laughs> red light ladies district. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what people will type. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom. <laughs> uh, Wendy's saying he's gonna have, he's gonna have a great time over there. Sylvia's here. Hello, everybody. Seventy-seven feels like eighty-one degrees. Uh, off and on rain all day. Yuck! Greensboro in in Greensboro, North Carolina. Welcome, Sylvia, to the show. Tom Henry's welcoming welcoming you as well. Seakeeper is here. Hi, Bruce. And all sunny, muggy, slight breeze, no rain all day, and none in the forecast. Ninety-four degrees right now. And quite comfortable. Thumbs up, everyone. Let's hope for a computer problem-free show. So far, so good. I haven't seen any glitches. Everything seems to be working just fine, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Tom Henry, my sense of humor must have stumped everyone from the earlier posts. <laughs> Kat Rose, hi there. Hi, Kat. I uh, just had to finish watching a different live stream. Hey, Kat, you're a busy person. You know, you you got you got to schedule your life, and you know, I'm glad you find time for us. I really do. I appreciate you being here. Glad you squeezed me into your busy schedule today. Welcome to Friday. Uh, Wendy is saying hi to you. Paul Wilgesam, um, hi, all the sun just came up. First time in four days, wow. Tom Henry, uh, Ann, um, camera company shipped the replacement battery. Same brand, and it doesn't work either. They need to get their product testing in shape. Oh my goodness, this is, this is unbelievable. Tom's having all kinds of fun with the camera. Um, how, how is the dam, Paul? <laughs> Tom Henry's wondering. Uh, there's a dam that might break in, in Pennsylvania or Virginia, wasn't it? I read that this morning. Uh, there's a dam that might be imminently collapsing in Virginia. Unbelievable. Cat Rose, that is so annoying when it happens. Cat uh, is talking, I think, about the camera part. Seakeeper, um, no, Tom, I got it. Uh, I was not shocked at all. People of the, of the night come in many flavors, and it's up to everyone to point to their taste if they so choose. Life is a bullet. Life is a buffet. Excuse me. Life is a buffet. Leave your lunch at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well said, Seakeeper. Well said. Uh, wise words. Uh, Sylvia, uh, Bruce, do you watch Mr. Traveler videos? Uh, he and his wife posted one today about the MSC Seaside. Mr. Traveler is a travel agent. Mrs. Traveler uh, spoke about people being topless at the pools, uh, Sylvia was saying, on the seaside. Uh, well, um, uh, to be honest, no, I, I haven't been watching his channels or their channel. Uh, I've heard of their channel. I have, um, but I, I haven't watched it, but that's interesting. Uh, people being topless at the pools. I'm wondering which pools are they? I, well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe are they all the pools? Are they just the public pools in the, on the main deck? Are they, are these the pools in the, uh, the, the yacht club? Uh, I don't know. That's interesting. Sylvia. Paul Wilgus, uh, it still hasn't broke through all the way. This is the dam I think he's talking about, but they are keeping the people evacuated and for good reason, obviously. Uh, Kate, uh, Kat, going, uh, Kat Rose is saying, yikes. Uh, Tom Henry, uh, hold your breath, everyone. Um, and Kat Rose saying, hi, Mr. Stinky. Debbie Manuel, hi, everybody. Only 95 in Chico with unhealthy air and clouds, but hallelujah, it's Friday. Thank goodness for that. When, uh, Debbie, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's cooler, but oh, the smoke in the air has just got to be brutal. I saw some uh, Satellite images or, or, or overhead shots of uh, the area where this forest fire is just ravaged through California. It's terrible. It's just showing the, you know, I think it was on CNN.com, you know, the fake news site. Um, I was watching uh, there. They were showing sort of a, not a time lapse, but they were showing sort of a, you know, uh, imagery from, you know, a week ago, 
seven days ago, five days ago, three days ago, that type of thing. And uh, just amazing how this fire has spread. It is a nasty one. Um, uh, Seakeeper, oh, it's it's pretty rub behind its ears for me. Uh, oh, um, he, he's talking about the cat. Brittany Lockwood, I, I think he's talking about the cat. Um, uh, Brittany Lockwood. I'm pretty sure he's talking about the ice talking about the cat. Brittany, uh, hi, Bruce. It is 90 and mostly cloudy. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Brittany. How are you doing today? Welcome from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And Jordan, uh, morning, Paul. Happy birthday. Um, Wendy Thompson, Paul, be careful. We were in St. Louis in 1993 and 1995. What a mess. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, and then Paul Wilgus uh, at Ann Jordan. Hello, Ann, and thank you. Um, and Wes is here. Wes Morrison from Bron New Braunfels, Texas. Uh, hey, buddy. How are you, pal? 98 and hot in New Braunfels. Uh, yes, this is August and it's going to stay hot. Paul Wilgus said, Wendy Thompson, I don't live near where the dam is, but they they keep interrupting the local news about it to let everybody in on this. Uh, obviously, this is serious stuff. Um, uh, Brittany Lockwood, I will most likely be just listening in on my, uh, and may comment here and there. Uh, right on, Brittany. Uh, welcome, to, uh, welcome to the show and, and listen well. <laughs> Right on. Debbie Manuel, bless you. Um, uh, yes, thank you for that. Um, sea keeper of cat allergy, huh? Uh, you'd wonder. No, I don't think so. I don't think I have a cat allergy. Uh, I got three of them here, and I don't sneeze all the time, so no. Uh, but uh, something got, got in there. <laughs> cat, 84, 82 Fahrenheit, but feels like 95 here in Sacramento. Man, oh, man. And Jordan, morning, Tokyo. Debbie, um, from Ann Jordan. Uh, Peter Heckema, I bet you're going to miss the cats when you get back to Creston. Uh uh, you know, um, we 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 don't really uh, miss them. Sort of, a, we're now used to this. You know, we kind of come in and we go out again. We go. I think the cats are kind of used to us. Kind of come around for a little while from time to time. Although, Mr. Stinky did live with us for about two odd years full time, and I, I have to admit that for the first week or two after uh, we parted. Uh, I kind of uh, would look around and wonder where he was, and oh yeah, he's not here anymore. That's right. Uh, or you'd see some movement out of your out of your corner of your eye, out of the peripheral vision. You wonder is that is it? No, that no, there's no cat here. Uh, no, but um, yeah, he's doing well. He's living with our daughter uh, full time, and uh, she adores him. This is her cat. This, this Mr. Stinky is my daughter's cat, and uh, so he is home where he should be. But uh, right now we're we're looking after three of these guys, We're having a good time here. Um, let's see here. Uh, Paul Wilgus, Wendy Thompson. I, I love, I love fat boys. <laughs> okay. Uh, Debbie Manuel. Hi, Ann. Hope you are, uh, you're well on your, on your Saturday. Um, and a cat, uh, roasting yips, yipes. And Jordan. Uh, yes, Debbie, all good and well. Seakeeper. I am all in favor of topless baiting. It's uh, biscuit challenged people such as myself wearing speedos that have me wanting to pull out my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you know there are those um, there are those types of uh, gentlemen out there who uh, believe that they uh, they still look as good today as they did at one time in the in, in the nineteen sixties when they were <laughs> of a younger age, or in the nineteen nineties when they were of a younger age, and uh, uh, today. Um, what they think they look like in their mind versus what they actually look like to our eyes are totally different images. And they wear those Speedos with the uh, the rolls of biscuit dough hanging over the edge. <laughs> it's a sight to be old. But, boy, it burns a memory in your mind, doesn't it? It's a tough one to burn out of there. I'll tell you that. Oh, Nina Frank uh, is, uh, is here uh, saying hi, Bruce and all. We haven't... Uh, Seen a summer like this since 1926. Heat wave for two months now in Sweden. And Jordan, we have spent, um, uh, we have sent uh, over 100 firefighters to help with the fires. Uh, uh, Anne is mentioning to Debbie. Uh, cat, the ones down near LA are the last I heard, like 90% Kent contained. Uh, Peter Hackham, a topless on the seaside. Any thoughts of a group cruise on the seaside? Uh, laugh out loud. <laughs> Oh my, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of know the average age of my audience uh, through the analytics that I follow on YouTube. And I, I, I don't think, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we want to go there. Uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we, uh, we're, we're not 20 somethings, you guys. Uh, I don't know if there's that much to really uh, be looking at there for that kind of thing. I, I don't know, Peter. Cat Rose, I heard um, Australia and New Zealand are sending firefighters to help out with all the fires in Oregon, Washington, California. 
not uncommon. Uh, I know uh, Canadian firefighters were sent to Australia to help there a few years back. It, it, it goes the other direction. They come up here. Yep, uh, help is needed and help is offered. Uh, Ann Jordan, uh, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, Nina, hey, uh, Kat from Ann. Uh, Ann Jordan says, yes, at Cat Rose, uh, Australia, New Zealand are sending firefighters over to help. Jim Thomas is saying, hey, everybody. Hey, Jim, how you doing, buddy? How's that knee of yours? Maurice, uh, uh, even uh, Maurice is here saying, hello, Bruce. If you have Netflix, uh, there's a new movie called Like Father, and it features Harmony of the Seas. I'm, I'm watching it now. So far, so good. Yes, with Kelsey Grammer and uh, the gal that was in that, um, oh, she's been in a bunch of shows, and I can't remember her name right now. My wife loves a series that she's in, and she's waiting for the second year to kick in on Netflix. She's been waiting. Kristen Bell there. That's all I had to say. And I got, I got Jen telling me it's Kristen Bell. She's in that uh, feature as well. We'll be, I'll be catching that uh, shortly. Not maybe not today, but the next few days, I hope. Um, Debbie Manuel saying, we really appreciated that ad and the firefighters coming over from, from uh, New Zealand and Australia. Um, and yet they're foreigners. Uh, how, how does America let foreigners in like that? It's just unbelievable. Uh, Boy, you wonder. Okay, Tom, I just lost 20 subscribers. Tom Henry, uh, Bruce, I saw a YouTube with the perfect suite for us. Um, 4,400 square feet and a pair of heated stone loungers in the room, unlimited spa massages. I think it was the uh, the uh, uh, RCC Yacht Club. Uh, uh, is that, would that be Royal Caribbean uh, uh, Club? That, that'd be pretty cool. And Jordan, no worries, Debbie. Hope we can help you. Uh, uh, or Debbie. Judy Anstis is here. Hey, Bruce. Uh, too stinking hot in California. <laughs> Average temperature in Fresno for the last month was 106 plus. Uh, lacking my my new 20-foot trailer and hitting the road to cooler temperatures. Right on. Planning on going to the Caribbean in December. Right on, Judy. Uh, whoops, laugh out loud. December. Yeah, uh, Judy, uh, get, that, get that trailer maybe up to Oregon somewhere uh, and get to the coast in Oregon at least and maybe you'll be down to the High 70s, and low 80s. It's something, isn't it? Maurice, uh, the cruisers on this ship are so lucky when they are filming it. Um, I, well, I, I don't know about how lucky they are because there's a lot of camera equipment everything everywhere and a lot of uh, people behind the scenes you don't see that are standing about with the lighting and, and then there's the makeup people and the, oh, the scripts and the producers and directors. Uh, it's a lot of work to put on a show that makes it look so effortless. Uh, uh, but you know, uh, maybe maybe the uh, the uh, ship uh, uh, you know had four or five hundred people with the production, and the rest were the tourists. But uh, boy, I, I don't know. If, were there areas of the ship? I wonder if they were roped off and they, they were no they, they weren't allowed access to certain parts of the Harmony of the Seas while they were shooting shooting and setting up cer certain scenes. I, I don't know, but uh, interesting. Um, what I what I find amazing is how these these actors and actresses. Uh, they can make it look so effortless and seamless. They can take a, they can do a scene inside a studio in Hollywood, and uh, it's made to look like a cruise ship. And then they can do a, a continuation of the similar scene on an actual ship itself. In this case, the Harmony of the Seas. After you know, leaving the studio, going home, packing up, getting to the airport, getting on the plane, flying, checking into a hotel getting on the ship, unpacking in their room, having production meetings, and then getting onto a set. And then, okay, let's take scene number one from scene 306, continue the story where we left off in LA five days ago. And they just, it, you look on the, you watch the final cut of the movie and you can't tell the difference that they're still in character. They're, they're absolutely just natural. And uh, the makeup people have got their look exactly the same. They look exactly the way they did 30 seconds ago in the film that we saw earlier. It's amazing how they can make this happen seamlessly. It's just incredible. And then when it's, you know, it's all over, of course, the, the editing room puts it all together and, and gives us an unbelievable show. It, it's just, it's just amazing. Uh, and yet, uh, what is it? 1% of, of all films shot really are super successful. The rest are just sort of, you know, they're out there. And, uh, and then there are millions of, I don't know, millions of feet of film that never make it to the light of day and or, there's a tons of shows, tons, tons of shows out there that have been shot with just as much care and attention. We never watch them. We, we, we you know, they, they're flops. <laughs> and yet, all that work went in to put it together. It's incredible. It is quite an industry, and um, I'll tell you, a lot of money involved. That's for sure. 
Um, Kat, uh, yay, w- uh, yeah, way too hot. Kat is saying about uh, the temperatures for sure. Tom Henry and the suite. Oh, back to the suite. The, the suite is $10,000 per night. But that does include first class airfare to and from the port. So, I mean, you factor that in, you know, maybe the flight's two grand or four grand. You know, it's only 10 grand a night for the room. You take that off and, hey, every little bit helps. You know, we're looking for bargains here. That's amazing, Tom. That is an amazing price for a unit. I'll tell you, uh, MG Toe, people pay to go on uh, a cruise, not to be part of the extras. I, I'm i with the MG. I, I wouldn't want to be uh, restricted from going to certain parts of a cruise ship that I didn't know was going to be part of a movie set. Uh, I don't know if I'd be that too happy about that. Um, but anyway, uh, it happened. Cat Rose, just watch the credits of any movie and you'll see how many names are involved, surely. Uh, Sylvia, the pros and cons of the MSC Seaside. They are, not, uh, they are not Yacht Club members. According to them, all the pools. Mr. Traveler mentioned the six-foot drop and, uh, and loved. Did he love it? Did he enjoy the six-foot drops on the, uh, on the uh, ship? Um, I know that uh, Jim Zim, uh, Jim Zimmerland, did a video about the seaside. And, and one of his complaints was how deep the pool is. The pools actually all are. Because you can't stand in the middle of the pool uh, and just stand there and stay cool. You have to tread water. Or if you want to stay in the pool and not tread water, you got to hang on to the edge. And it uh, gets to be a bit of a pain after a while. He didn't, he didn't care for that. He kind of likes a pool that's like five feet deep. So that at least if you're, you know, five, six and above, you can, you know, breathe and stand on the bottom. Maybe on your tippy toes at least. Uh, but uh, interesting. MG Toe, I don't care if they're actors or movie people. I pay for a cruise myself for my enjoyment and uh, mg makes a good point i you know i, I don't know i mean if uh, if um if i were to book a cruise uh and then the cruise line were to send me an alert saying look uh we uh we're, we're discounting the cruise uh, by a couple hundred bucks and we're going to give you 200 dollars credit because there is a tv show or a movie going to be filmed on board when you're on board the ship uh, you can cancel for free if you like. Uh, let us know. I, I, I'd have to really think about that, whether or not I want to, you know, whether or not I want to be on that ship or not for that for that, um, you know, for that cruise. MG makes a good point. Uh, Cat Rose editing, yes, editing is right. Cat Judy Anstis, I did a um, I did a short scene on a Y five O last year. And it was a 60-second screen and took them five hours to film it. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that in, in amazing? I mean, the number of hours it takes to do uh, movies. I, I once watched, I think it was I think it was Tom Hanks. It might have been Michael Keaton. But an actor of that style, uh, I saw them in an interview, and I want to say they were either on The Letterman Show or, or somewhere anyway. And somehow the question came up about, well, how long were you on the, uh, how long did it take you to shoot the movie, you know, and whatever show it was. And uh, the actor would have said, uh, well, it took us so many days. And uh, was that a long time, you know, compared to what you normally do was the next question. And the actor said, well, uh, some of the scenes were tricky. We had a lot of outdoor scenes and the weather was very unpredictable. And there were days where in eight hours we would get 45 seconds of of movie shot. That's that was it, uh, and then I had seen, I had seen an interview with another actor. Um, this has got to be a decade ago, and uh, the the the, uh, the story goes that the, uh, the movie was shot all indoors in a in a closed set, but that there were so many angles involved with the uh, with the shooting of some of the scenes that even with a twelve hour day, they were only able to get a, a minute and forty five seconds of movie time shot a day. And they were doing a 90-minute movie. <laughs> so do the math, folks. That's a long, long time to, to, to be in character, to be available, to be in character, uh, to continue in the story. And you know that they don't shoot the scripts from beginning to end. They shoot all over the place. And you have to know in your in your brain what your character's brain is thinking at that moment in time. Because you might be on page 144 of a 300-page script. Uh, and, uh, you know, things have happened for the first 143 pages, and now we're at page 144, and the scene calls for, you know, either a happy moment, a sad moment, a tense moment, who knows, confrontational. Uh, and then uh, two days later, they're shooting scene page number 247, and there's a whole different atmosphere going on. And this these actors have to be in character so that when we see the finished product, 
we can just follow along with the picture and the show and the story. And uh, yeah, it all looks good to us. The amount of work that takes is incredible from every angle in front of the camera, behind the camera and everything else. It's incredible. Uh, Tracy Dunlop, hey Bruce, saw your video that you put out today about Haven, etc. It was good. Tracy's giving me two thumbs ups. Thank you, Tracy, for that very much. Uh, thank you for your comment. I hope you folks know that. Uh, if you haven't, I did re release a video this morning talking about the Haven uh, Suites and the uh, MSC Yacht Club and also some of the Royal Suites on Royal Caribbean. I was sort of highlighting how a small percentage of cruisers, 2% uh, to 5% to 7% of all the people on a cruise ship are up there in those high-end units and the amount of money that they're paying compared to what we're paying it's astronomical and um uh, a good bunch of the cost of the cruise is paid for by maybe 200 people up way up there they're paying maybe a third of the entire cost of the entire cruise uh for the cruise line uh by the amount of money they're paying for that service up there and the rest of us who are down below and having a good old time where we are. Uh, I certainly don't mind having people up in high-end suites. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I know that I'm getting a balcony for a pretty good price. And I really have to admit, you know, I bet you a good re a big reason for why I'm paying so little for what I'm getting is um, these folks up here, they're paying a lot more for the view they have and for the service they're getting and for the surroundings they're enjoying. And I thought I'd make a video about that today. And Hope you get to check it out. Hope you enjoyed. Give me thumbs ups on it. Let me know if you like it. Send me a comment. Uh, thank you, Tracy, for your comment. That's very nice. Uh, Maurice, uh, by the way, I saw D&G Explorers, and they said they are going on the uh, Sea Cruisers Group Cruise on the Norwegian Bliss. I think you're right. I think they booked that. Um, Maurice, uh, I saw the video. Um, MG Toe, there are a lot of sequels that people never hear about because they're so bad. Below a B movie like uh, Gone with the Wind too. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, there's so much on the cutting room floor. Uh, I I've forgotten. Uh, I loved uh, watching the Dick Van Dyke show, the original Dick Van Dyke show from the '60s. It's all black and white. Rob Reiner, Dick Dick Van Dyke, and Mary Tyler Moore. Um, there was a Dick Van Dyke two on television. There was a second Dick Van Dyke with Dick Van Dyke as the star, but not Mary Tyler Moore. I think it was on television in the 80s, uh, early 80s. Uh, lasted uh, one season maybe and gone. And if you want to see clips, you can see actual clips of the show on YouTube. Just enter a search bar, you know, uh, um, uh, what you would call it to, Dick Van Dyke Show too, and uh, you'll see you'll see clips of that show. Um, it didn't work. Uh, they they had the, they had it in color, and they the setting was in Arizona, and it was all different people, and there was no no continuality of the story. I mean, you know, it's, it's just not the same. Uh, they had the magic and then they stopped it and that was it. And they couldn't get it back. Um, let's see here. Sylvia, I like a five foot deep pool too. I'm about five foot three. Sylvia, you're, that's exactly what I was thinking of. You know, if you have a five foot deep pool, uh, someone on their tippy toes, uh, who's your height can at least still touch the bottom. Uh, and, uh, you don't have to just tread water all the time. Uh, but, um, these six foot deep pools, uh, I don't know what the point is. You're not allowed to dive into swimming pools on cruise ships. They don't have diving boards. Uh, so why have a deep pool? I, I don't really know. But anyway, um, that's the way MSC is doing it. It's the European way, you know, European. Uh, Debbie saying hi, Sylvia. Richard C. just booked a Car Caribbean cruise. 10 nights, 600 bucks on Princess. There are deals out there. And Richard, you are correct. There are deals out there. Uh, you just have to shop around, and that is a good price for a cruise. Debbie Manuel, oh, that's awesome. Richard and Jordan, hey, Richard C., that's awesome. What ship? Richard C., uh, Sylvia's wondering, where are you leaving from? Peter Heckema, Richard, that's amazing. Only 60 bucks a night. Barb, hello, Bruce. Hi, Barb. And everyone, I watched the uh, Norwegian uh, YouTube on the Haven, and this is just my two cents. There are usually three sides to every story, your side, your side, their side, and the correct. So, <laughs> okay. And she ran out of space to type, so we have to go here. Uh, okay, uh, well, let's see. Uh, oh, okay, I, Bart goes on to say, I say this because if it was so bad, why are they planning a group cruise and a cruise with NCL in November? Just a thought. Okay, uh, Barb is referring to uh, cruising with wheels. Um, uh, I think she's referring to the uh, the Haven 
the Haven concierge that we've all grown to not love but know of, Adrian. Um, and uh, she's thinking there's you know different sides to every story. We have heard the uh, you know cruising with wheel side. Uh, I haven't heard much from Norwegian. Uh, just a couple of uh, quick responses. Um, certainly haven't heard hadn't heard heard anything from Adrian himself. Um, and she's wondering why are they still going on? Why are the cruising with wheels guys still going on a group cruise? Is it on the getaway? Uh, I'm not sure. And then they're also booked, I think, on is it the encore. I'm not sure. Um, down the road from now. And 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 I think Frank made a very uh, made it very obvious. He he said, look, uh, we're still going on our cruise. We love Norwegian. We we really love Norwegian Cruise Line. They're Platinum members. They've been on countless cruises. They've been treated royally every time, but one time. Uh, they've run into staff members that are just fantastic people, except for one. And uh, they don't have a problem with the cruise line. They have a problem with one person. And this one person they've mentioned in this video, and uh, uh, they're stumped as to why this one person has a gig. Well, how, how can this person have this job if that's how this person treats people? Because they did their homework and talked to other people on the bliss who also had a problem with one particular person um, and were very upset about it. And uh, uh, it is just a shock. Me, I, I, I just, I, I, can believe I can understand. I can get it. I do get it. You can get someone riled up and a person will, you know, explode or, or react and, and have a little, you know, temper tantrum. Uh, some people can get out there. Some people's skins. We, you know, if any of you have brothers and sisters, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, to have this uh, happen to multiple guests on the same cruise, all Haven guests, <laughs> these are Haven guests having a problem with this guy. This is, uh, there's something wrong here. There, there, there's something very unright here. There's uh, something not normal here. And yet the cruise line um, doesn't seem, nothing seems to have happened to me. This, this whole thing. I, I don't know what to, again, I'm not there. I wasn't there. It wasn't me. Uh, I don't know this guy. I'm not going to know this guy. Uh, so I can't tell you the, what's going on. I can only tell you what I'm seeing and hearing from my vantage point. And uh, from you folks, I know a lot of you have been on a lot of cruises. I cannot imagine that you've ever run into anything like this, if ever. Um, maybe, maybe you know, you've had an incident with a staff member over some item. But uh, for someone this high up to be doing this, um, this is unusual. This is very, very not normal. Like I said before, it's not normal. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Thank you, Barb, for your comment on that. Um, Seakeeper, come on now. Richard, see, you you, you wet our appetites. Uh, please give us the details. I, I, I might need another cruise next winter when I'm done with the NCL getaway at the end of the month. Uh, MC Toe, uh, Richard, don't don't get off the ship. <laughs> Stay on the ship. Um, Maurice, uh, is security tight when you have actors filming on a ship when you're embarking? Boy, I would imagine it would be. Um, it all depends, of course, on the actors and, and uh, you know, uh, I would also think security not only for the actors but for the equipment millions of dollars of equipment uh being utilized here uh again i i i wouldn't be a fan of wanting to be on a cruise ship that's doing a film shoot on board because uh, i've seen in downtown calgary here uh they'll have an entire block uh roped off uh they'll have like four lanes down to two lanes or down to one lane one way because three lanes are blocked off for all the equipment that's being used for outdoor shots uh, for scenes. And there, there might be five minutes of footage being put together all day long in a downtown Calgary block. And it's an it's a 18 hour lockdown with security everywhere to watch everything. Um, same thing with cruise ships. Uh, you got to wonder about uh, about uh, all the equipment and everything else. I don't know. I um, wonder. Uh, uh, Sylvia, uh, MG Toe, why wouldn't Richard get off the ship? Uh, we don't uh, even know. We don't even know where he's going. Why? Why? <laughs> I think MG is is us using his usual uh, method of uh, 
don't trust uh, don't trust any place you go. Don't get off the ship anywhere. Just stay on the ship and you'll be safe. You won't get pickpocketed. Steve Bartley, Dick Van Dyke's second show was in the early 70s for at least two years. Our fathers were golf buddies for a couple of years in the mid-60s in Scotland. Um, now, when you say our fathers, uh, Scott, uh, Steve, who are you referring to? I don't quite get who our fathers are. We're golf buddies. Love to know. But thank you for clarifying my my. Um, Misunderstanding. I thought it was the 80s, but obviously it's the early 70s uh, that they did the show. Would have been, I guess, what, about eight years after the last episode aired, um, the original Dick Van Dyke show that Dick Van Dyke gave it a shot, perhaps. I'm kind of curious what, uh, what what kind of information you have there. Paul Wilgus, uh, Barb, it's too late to cancel their November cruise and get their money back. They explained about the group cruise. They already have over 100 people booked, so they're going, they're committed, they're going forward. Um MG Doe, it's too dangerous nowadays. Thieves and pickpockets everywhere. The Caribbean is not recovered. See, that's what that's his impression of what's going on out there. Cat, uh, they they mention they mention why. Cat says, um, Sylvia, uh, a cruising with wheels group cruise is in January 2020. I'm going. It's the Encore. Yeah, that's a, that's a second one. That that I believe that's a second uh, cruise, Sylvia. If I got this right. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, oh, uh, Tom Henry, they are currently taking votes on the group cruisers and, and may cancel. Oh, so they're reviewing. They may not go. Okay. Richard C., uh, Princess on October the 18th. Here it is. He's going on October the 18th, Princess, Eastern Caribbean. They have lots of cabins. Okay, there you go. Now, we don't know the name of the ship. We don't know where he's leaving from. But uh, we, 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 you know, it's Florida, so we know that much. Uh, October 18th is the date, so go to vacationstogo.com, look up um, Caribbean Cruises, departing October 18th, you'll see the Princess Cruises leaving on that day, you'll figure it out. MG Toe, you'll also see the prices, by the way, MG Toe, um, and not safe. Why pay to see a bunch of poverty and get potentially robbed? A group of Princess passengers were robbed a couple of days ago on an excursion, see, in Mexico, we say. Um, Paul Wilgus uh, at Richard C., I may have to take a look at that cruise. Thank you. Okay, Peter Heckema. Bruce, if you um, Google Adrian, he has a lot of good comments from cruisers. Nothing too bad at all. Most love him. Um, you know, Peter, what can I tell you? I, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. I, I wasn't there. Um, I just know what I'm, you know, the only news I've ever heard about Adrian is the bad news, right? Um, I know nothing of his past. I know nothing of his of his uh, of his uh, you know his fans or anything else. I just just know what I'm hearing here. But uh, he had to have done something right uh, for many 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 a year to get the job he's got. Because to become a concierge of the Haven Club, uh, you you are paying your dues and uh, you have treated uh, the right people right. Um, so he's there for a reason. Why he did what he did with cruising with wheels. Only he can tell you. Um, I don't know what the mentality is on this. I just don't know. It's my standard response. I don't know. Um, I'll never know. I, I'll never know because it's over. It happened. It's been done. And the fallout continues. Um, but I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm led to believe there were more than just the two of them having issues with this gentleman. Now, the comments are positive on Google. Great. That's great. Um, um, why no negative comments? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I can't. I'm at a loss to go any further on that. Sorry. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Sylvia, MG Toe, how often do you cruise? Tom Henry, here come the cops. See? Uh, Tom Henry, I was just checking my um, February 29th, 2020 cruise. Average of $264 per night, so not Richard's bargain. Notice the cabin is showing 9,066, deck 9, forward aft. How can a cabin be forward aft? <laughs> that's, a, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, um, that's a twisted up ship, I'll tell you that right now. That's a, I don't know, Tom. <laughs> Richard C., uh, sorry, uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, October 18th, and hitting uh, Princess Key, St. Martin, uh, Thomas, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, Antigua Saint Martin on the Caribbean ship is okay. Did it for our Panama cruise in February. There are the details on that ship. Wendy Thompson, forward aft, can't get there from here. Uh, yeah, try to get out of that one. Um, laugh it out loud, Tom Henry. Um, okay, MG Toe, uh, quite a bit over three decades. Last time was the uh, Splendor, 
Uh, looks like a repositioning cruise to the Panama Canal was the last cruise he was on. MG Toe, uh, Sylvia saying, you might as well stay in the USA in a hotel and enjoy it. You know, cruising is just bad. Maurice, any new update on Norwegian Joy? Maurice is wondering about. Um, and okay, here I have Steve Bartley uh, saying a, uh, a comment here about this uh, show. Okay, my father and Dick's father, uh, my father and Dick's father were golfing buddies. Dad says his father was as funny as Dick, Dick Van Dyke's father. Uh, both Dick and his and his dad said Jerry was the funniest, the, the other son. So Dick Van Dyke's brother, Jerry Van Dyke, who was on coach, was funnier than Dick Van Dyke. And Dick Van Dyke's dad and Jerry's dad was hilarious too. So how about that? Isn't that great, Steve? That's awesome. So you've got inside news on that, on that thing. That's fantastic. Maurice, any new update on Norwegian Joy is your question. I don't have any update that I can really tell you about other than uh, the last I heard was... Um, uh, Norwegian came out with a with a, uh, a twenty five dollar reduced deposit uh, deal, uh, and that included the joy for sh for trips on the joy. Um, if you did a sort of early bookings, you could get deals. Uh, they had these five offers they're tossing around, and depending on the room, you could pick whatever you wanted. Uh, and I had heard from a, a a viewer of mine. Excuse me, I heard I heard from a viewer of mine who told me that they were booked for an Alaska cruise on the Norwegian Pearl. I believe it was the Pearl. And that the um, that their cruise would now not be done on the Pearl, but would now be done on the Joy. And that they had been automatically rebooked from the Pearl onto the Joy, and that all kinds of info was coming their way about the ship. Um, and I don't know if they were happy about it, uh, if they were upset about it or if they were neutral about it, because I don't know the circumstances as to why they booked the Pearl in the first place. It could have been that they like a small ship and now they're not on a small ship. Maybe that's a problem. Or the deal was so good on the Pearl that they booked the Pearl. Now they got a screaming deal on the joy. Um, I don't know how they how that's going to go over, but that's for next year, um, 2019, April or after. So that much I know. That's all I have on the joy at this moment. I know it's going to be um, uh, it's going to be using Los Angeles as its home port um, after next year's Alaska cruise season. So what would that be? The end of September into October of 1919, the joy will be home porting out of Los Angeles for Mexican and uh, Panama Canal cruises. Uh, now, these Panama Canal cruises will likely be two weeks long each direction. So the ship will go from L.A. to Miami probably and then turn around come back to Los Angeles. So it'll be in L.A. once a month if it does Panama cruises. If it's going to do uh, a combination of these and Mexican cruises, it may well do seven to ten day Mexican cruises and, again, be in L.A. every you know, every 10th day for a Mexican cruise and every month for a Panama situation. We'll know more as the days go by, the weeks go by, and they'll update us on any other info. So there you go. Maurice, uh, are they going to change the crew when the uh, Carnival Triumph changes over to the sunrise? Oh, huh, well, uh, I, I don't know why, uh, to be honest. I'm not sure, but I can see um, the fact that the, 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 um, the dry dock is two months long. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, uh, Maurice, that the entire crew has a contract running out uh, during dry dock. Uh, it could well be that, uh, you know, they get there. I think it's Cadiz in Spain for dry dock, first of 60 days. And it could well be that, uh, you know, a quarter of the crew's contract expires sort of on the last day or two of that cruise. And they will leave the ship as it enters dry dock and, and they can go home for a two month of vacation or one month, whatever it is. So any, a certain number of them will be brought back on new contracts. Now they may be redeployed on other ships or on this exact ship when it's finished, or they might bring them on board the sunrise with like two weeks to go and uh, get them down below to get the ship ready with, you know, with the contractors and help clean up and, and, and get the ship ready for the first paying guests on day 61. Um, and it's possible that in the second 30 days of dry dock, um, 
or in the first 30 days of dry dock, I'm, so, I'm sorry, so right up to dry dock, maybe 20% of the crew will be, you know, contracts up. During the first 30 days of dry dock, another 20% of the crew can leave too. Their contract is up. They get a month off. Um, and then uh, in the last uh, month of dry dock, another 20% are going, but 20% are coming back, and the rotation begins again. Um, and it could well be that, uh, that on the first day of paying customers, the, uh, the uh, Carnival Sunrise may have 80% of the crew that they had before and 20% are new people, possible. But the 20 percenters could be all veterans of other ships in the Carnival family, and they're just being transferred into the Sunrise. And, uh, you know, after about a week or two, they'll be fully familiar with the whole ship and know what's going on. I, I don't know. So a lot of speculation there, but uh, the 60-day downtime is huge. This is a long time for a cruise ship to be out of action. 30 days is considered a major dry dock. This is a really odd, not an odd event. This is a, it's a one-off. This happens very rarely that you have 100, uh, 60 days and 200 million bucks being spent on a, on a, re a refurbishment. That's a big deal. Okay, Chevy in first. Hi, y'all. So should I be concerned about my first cruise? Four ports, Nassau, Amber, Gove, Grand Turk, and Half Moon Key. Should you be concerned? Um, the only concern I would have, Chevy and First, is you might have too much fun. That, that's that's a concern. Too much fun. And while you're on board, you're going to just, uh, you can't help yourself. You're going to go to the booking room that they'll have on board, and you're going to book yourself another cruise right away. That that might be your big problem. Um, I don't think you're going to have a problem at all. I think you're going to have a great time. You're going to love it. Um, Nassau, you can take a take a tour if you want. Stay on the ship if you want. Uh, go on the land a little bit on your own if you wish. Um, uh, play it by ear. Uh, Amber Cove, that's a private resort. You're going to have a great time there. No one's going to bother you. Uh, Grand Turk, you're going to love it. It's very nice. Um, lots to do there. Uh, beaches and uh, pretty. And then Half Moon Key, uh, that's another private uh, island. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's all private beach, private everything. It's run by the cruise line. You're going you're gonna to be spoiled rotten. Absolutely spoiled rotten. Way to go, Chevy and First. I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. I can't wait for you to have your cruise and tell us how it went. Uh, don't think you should have any issues. Tom Henry, MG Toe. My cousin said the number one tour in Rio was a trip to behind the Christ statue to see the slums. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I don't know this to be true, but that's an interesting comment. Uh, Tom, I, where'd you hear that? Number one tour in Rio is to see the poor people. Okay. Um, and Jordan, uh, morning, Chevy and First. MG Toe, uh, Sylvie, uh, Sylvia and Maurice, the Cardinal Sunshine is having a clothing optional cruise soon. You may want to go or, or have Bruce do a group cruise. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all I need is to be involved in a, uh, a, 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 no clo a clothing optional cruise. Uh, I've had too many biscuits to uh, to want to play that game. I'll tell you that right now. I like my biscuits and gravy. Um, <laughs> Maurice, Bruce, why don't you do the group cruise, um, the new Virgin Cruises ship? I forgot what they named the ship, uh, uh, the Scarlet Lady. It's going to be called the Scarlet Lady. She's coming out in 2020. I don't want to wait until 2020 to do my first cruise uh, with you guys. Uh, I would like to do one before the end of the year if that's possible, and, uh, and then uh, a couple more right away in the first half of next year. But, uh, you know, maybe maybe by the time the Scarlet Lady comes around, we might have a group cruise on her. But something tells me that's not going to happen right away because, like all new ships, the Scarlet Lady is going to be sold out for the first year. It's the first Virgin Voyages ship out of three that they've ordered. The second one doesn't come out until the second year of the first one's lifetime. And that first ship is going to be just packed. And the dollars to get on her so will be top dollar. Not going to be a cheap cruise. I'd rather uh, I'd rather take advantage of a of a, of a better deal, of, you know, get my money working, giving me more for less, because there'll be a premium price on this ship. I'm, I'm just feeling it. I'm just certain because they're the marketing they have is fantastic. They're 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 pre cruise marketing already. They're already showing us video what the ship looks like. It's all computer animation. Um, they're getting people excited. They haven't even got the thing half built. It's fantastic. They're doing a great job. Shipping first. So, so what should I take with me on the ports? Uh, bare minimum. Um, well, these ports are warm, uh, so you're you're going to be uh, you know very comfortably dressed, uh, probably in shorts or <coughs> excuse me, um, 
you know, something for the heat. I mean, you're going to have to be prepared for sunshine being right up there. The sun's going to be high, just like Atlanta in the summer. It's going to be warm. So dress appropriately for that. Uh, w- wear walk- walking shoes, comfortable walking shoes, because you're going to be on, uh, in some cases, you'll be on cobblestone streets. Other cases, you'll be on maybe crooked sidewalks. So, you know, be prepared for anything. Um, and be prepared for just a lot of walking, because uh, you might be on, uh, like, in a, in a shopping environment, with you know shade and fans and air conditioning, but you're gonna be on your feet for a long time that day on on shore. Be ready for that. If you're gonna to go to a, a beach setting, well then of course you're gonna take your your bathing trunks and uh, uh, you may take some towels with you from the cruise ship. But if you're on these private islands, they'll provide towels on land. You won't have to take them off the ship. They'll have them there with the cruise line's logo on the towels. Um, they'll have refreshments on the shore. They'll have food on shore for you. Some things you may pay extra for. Some things are included. You'll figure it out. Won't be a problem. And uh, you'll have a fantastic time. Uh, Sunscreen, my dear. And the headwear, sunglasses, and good walking shoes are right there, your key items to think about. But if you're going to be on one of these uh, private keys, um, you know, you're just going to grab some lounge chairs uh, on the beach. Take with you what you're going to need to be on a lounge chair on a beach. That's all you're going to need. Everything else is taken care of. And if it's a private island, uh, you can probably go back onto the ship anytime you want and then come back off the ship and back onto the island again and you go back onto the ship whenever you want. It's just you. It's all yours, and there's no member of the public going to bother you. There's not going to be any hucksters on the beach trying to sell you something. You're going to have a great time. Uh, Tom Henry, Sunrise is due to have some cruises out of Norfolk, Virginia. I thought, great, no airfare. I went to the website, and it was so bad compared to what I'm used to on Norwegian. On 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 uh, Norwegian, I gave up. Uh, and I'm wondering, you you were upset about the the website, how it runs and operates. Um, I was going to suggest Tom then uh, go to vacationsgo.com and and look up the fares there for comparison purposes. <clears throat> but uh, be prepared that. The sunrise should be that the cruise cruises should be on. I think I saw a bunch already on the vacations to go website. You can check them out from low to high and and you know where they're departing from and going to. So look into that, sir. Cat uh, Chevy sunscreen and ID. There you go, uh, Sylvia, Tom Henry, laughing out loud. MG Toe. I see Holland America is starting to do more cruises out of Los Angeles. Smart move on uh, on CCL up. Uh, Six cents today, fifty nine eleven. A smart move on on Carnival. Yeah, a Carnival has. Uh, they're doing cruise ships out of uh, San Diego uh, next year, two thousand nineteen. Um, if they're going to add LA, uh, I say great because LA is last year was underutilized. Uh, we'll be interesting to see. Chevy first cap ID uh, driver's license or, or or my sale and sign a sing card sign card and passport. Um, if you're going uh, on shore, say in Nassau. Uh, then take along with you what you would take to any city uh, that you would go to as, as a, for a city tour. So uh, your room key, obviously your room key, your sign card, um, your ID, your passport, take that with you. Uh, if you're going to go on a private island uh, that's run by the cruise line, you don't have to take any ID with you. You'll just have your sign sign and sail card with you, maybe on the lanyard. That's all you're going to need. And uh, it's like being on the ship but on land because you're in an enclosed facility. You should be fine. Sea Keeper, a half moon key is absolutely delightful. We were taught to pick up jellyfish and dump them in the trash. Uh, they were a non stinging variety, and I am an animal lover, so I left them alone. There you go. Cat Rose, sale and sign card, definitely from what I hear is what Cat's saying. Sylvia, uh, Tom Henry, maybe MG Toe should go to Rio on the tour behind the statue of Christ. He needs Jesus. <laughs> Uh, Sylvia, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Paul Wilgus, uh, did you see Don's video where St. Kitts has uh, 1 million visitors to their port so far this year? Um, I didn't see the video, but I'm not surprised because uh, Cayman Islands has 1.7 million. St. Kitts is way up there. So for them to have a million by now into August kind of makes sense. Of course, this year is an anomaly for St. Kitts. <clears throat> St. Kitts got a lot of spillover. Uh, from cruise ships that they would not normally get because of the hurricanes last year. So um, uh, St. Thomas, St. Martin, all that January, February traffic. Uh, also, the, the traffic that would have gone to Dominica, uh, to other parts, they went to here. They went to uh, St. Kitts instead. And so St. Kitts numbers are way up. Grenada, 
Grenada's numbers are way up this year uh, because they got ships that weren't normally going to call on them. Uh, next year, it will probably be down again if these islands are back up and running as they expect to be. So it, it varies with these hurricanes, of course. MG Toe, Sylvia, you probably believe there is a Jesus. Oh, oh here we go. We've, I, I've just lost 20 more subscribers, and I'm not even in the middle of this one. I'm just the moderator. I, I didn't do anything. Uh, and Jordan Paul Wilgus, not yet. We'll soon see Don's video. Okay. MG Toe, when I go on a cruise now, I enjoy the ship more than seeing a bunch of poverty. How about that? There you go. Suzanne Hoffman, cruise ships need to put a maximum age on the clothing optional cruise, cruisers. Yikes. <laughs> I don't that I don't think uh, the age factor is the issue. Uh, you know what, Susan? I think what they should do. <clears throat> Here's my thought. Okay, <clears throat> you know when you go to a to a, a state fair or you go to Disneyland or Universal, they have those signs for the kids that you have to be this tall, you know, in order to go on this ride. I think what they should have is a cutout. Okay, they have a cutout for the guys. And a cutout for the girls, okay? And it's a profile cutout. So, uh, you know, if you like, if you like between six and six two, you got to fit this cutout. So you you stand in there and you have to shimmy yourself through sideways. And if you if you fit through the cut, you're good to go. So, and what I think they should really do is they should take a guy like me, uh, or maybe someone even worse off than I am, and they should make the guy inhale and hold in as much as he can. And then take that cutout and say, you have to beat that in order to be topless. And if you can't get through there without touching the uh, the uh, side, you, you can't go topless. I, I think that might be the fair way to do this. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe they could go modern high tech and they could use sort of like a like a laser light thing, you know, where they have like a like a white screen over here, you know. And then you stand in front of it. You you look. You stand sideways, right? You're just at a right angle, and you look over there, and the camera's over there, and and the laser points at your body, and if any of the laser light touches any part of your anatomy, <laughs> you can't be topless. <laughs> no matter how much you suck it in, there's no hiding from the laser. You know, maybe maybe, maybe you know. I'm just I'm just trying to think about how can they do this. Uh, Maybe they can do something like that without us knowing about it. And uh, we come into the deck area, and uh, a young uh, a young crew member comes up with a little hand stamp thing, you know. And they have two colors: they have a green one, and they have a red one. <laughs> if you get a red stamp on your wrist, you can't go topless. If you get a green one, you're good to go. Take your clothes off all you want. Uh, maybe that's you know maybe that's a way to do it. I, I'm just trying to come up with solutions here. And keep people from throwing up. Uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I don't know, Maurice. There is a cruise line. I think it's a German line that uh, has a nude sun deck. Alrighty, there's there there you go. Paul Wilgus, MG Toe. So you stay in your house and never go out because there's poverty here too. Okay, maybe. Well, I don't know. The ships are the attraction, especially when you're on a seven day cruise. That's what he's saying. Tracy Dunlop, Chevy first. I just take the necessities when I'm getting off at ports. We never have any issues. Tom Henry, my cousin did Buenos Aires and Rio back in the 90s as part of an N MBA degree. She liked Buenos Aires. Good for me. But Rio was a dump, she said. Not a nice place to visit. Interesting. Tom Henry, oh, no, pool shrinkage. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're on uh, one of those uh, October um, New England cruises, uh, the shrinkage could be something serious, like a scared turtle, like George Costanza would say. I would say so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Seakeeper, on a clothing optional, what do you wear on formal nights? Uh, boggles the mind, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I would think a, uh, I could put on a, a bow tie, you yeah, know, something. For, maybe a top hat, you know, top hat, bow tie, and a walking stick. There you go. You got to class it up, don't you think? I, I don't know. Uh, cat's laughing out loud. Bring your own towel, she's saying. Uh, Sylvia, the sea keeper, she's laughing out loud. Tom Henry, oh, Sylvia, we have a doubter. Um, Maurice, uh, are they building a new Oasis class ship, uh, size ship, or is the four they have enough? They're building a number five. It's on the books to be built, uh, but I don't think they cut the steel for about another six months. Wouldn't surprise me, uh, Maurice, that um, the architects and engineers have been busy working on the design on this fifth one, 
and it'll be an upgrade from the symphony of the seas by the time it hits the water it's three years from now or so uh but it's they're planning on building a fifth uh sylvia tom henry i'm not even going to comment <laughs> tracy tracy donald you you have to take your your ship card and and license uh, if you're going offshore I, I didn't take my passport unless i wanted to get stamped unless i want to get stamped i don't take my passport okay shaming first I, I am worried about the hucksters uh uh yes the, the hucksters on shore yes uh, well you're not gonna have that problem in the private resorts but in nassau you might run into that uh there'll be hucksters uh for sure because nassau they're they're everywhere um with with nassau i would take a look at what the cruise line is offering you for uh for a tour or maybe you can take a um you can take a a, a bus right from the ship to paradise island and you can go to uh uh, you can go to the uh, the big resort there. Um, excuse me, Atlantis. That's the name of the big resort on Paradise Island in Nassau. Go to the Atlantis and uh, uh, check out the uh, check out the water rides. Uh, check out the uh, the water features. You might be able to buy a day pass to enjoy the uh, the water park they have there. Uh, might be worth your while. You'll be safe there, uh, very much so, because good security as well. Um, Cat Rose is saying, "I want to go to Saint Saint Kitts." Tom Henry. At Maurice, uh, I say it's time for a Galaxy class ship. Guess what it'll be named? Um, Galaxy of the Seas? I, I don't know. Uh, Tom Henry, uh, yep, cat. The rum is really good in St. Kitts. How about that? Red Chevy first. Thanks, everyone, for all your help. Bruce, you were the first person I found. We started countdown at 280 days, now only 50 more days. Isn't that amazing, uh, Chevy? Uh, it's been that long already, and my one-year anniversary is coming up on the 19th this month. 16 days, I'll have been on the air a year. I know you were involved with my channel many, many months ago. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm always glad you're here. Tom Henry, uh, best pina coladas on the train on the train excursion, Tom is saying. Mm. Uh, interesting. Cat Rose, uh, alas, I, I cannot drink due to meds. There you go. It would be a, it would be scrawny people. I don't know. Uh, Tracy Dunlop, let's not get into religious beliefs. This is a traveling with Bruce uh, at MG Toe. So gosh darn it to heck, let's stay to religious. Let's get rid of the get rid of that. Yeah, I agree. Paul Lucas at MG Toe. Since the Christ stands on the mountain, there is no there is no behind it other than a walkway. There's nothing behind it other than a walkway. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, MG Toe, Cat, you'll have more fun when you don't drink. Good for you. There you go. Um, Tom Henry shedding a tear for cat because she can't drink. Richard uh, MG Toe, what is your favorite cruise and to where? Uh, he's kind of curious. And he says, I have no favorite cruise. They're all different, uh, which I like. Uh, MG Toe, really not one place. He goes, nope, uh, not one place. Seakeeper, uh, when we were docked in Gibraltar, an old German clunker called Princess Diane, uh, or Dane, D D A N A E. So it would be, would be what, what do you, how do you say that? Dane was docked next to us and everyone on there was topless on that pool deck age be darned how about that they went top no matter what well there you go russell sparks is here uh fat shaming okay russell uh uh cat uh, i would have to wear a lot of sunscreen <laughs> sea keeper maybe uh by the time a pool shrinkage happened i would fit through the cutout <laughs> You see, uh, there you go. You, you, you jump in the pool with your bathing suit on. You get all nice and cold. You let the shrinkage take its effect. Then you go over to the sign to see if you fit. And maybe you'll fit then. And now you can take your gunchies off and go in. Oh, my goodness, Seakeeper. You're always thinking. God, I love you for that. Uh, and Jordan, Debbie Manuel. Firefighters have arrived to uh, help is on its way. Uh, way to go. Uh, uh, Debbie, good news for Debbie, I hope. Wendy Thompson, uh, no, let's do the biscuits and cake cruise as the group cruise. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's not do the, uh, let's not do the clothes, clothesless thing for our group cruise. Let's take a cruise where we can eat our faces off. How about that one? I think, I think, I think we'd all be in for that. Uh, Debbie Manuel, I swam with dolphins in Nassau through uh, the cruise line. Return ferry made sure they dumped us off past the ship, forcing us to walk through town. Did not feel safe. People grabbing at us. Yeah, that's not fun. Uh, that's not fun at all. Debbie, uh, thank you again, and she's saying to Anne. Yeah, um, 
I don't, I don't like to have to deal with the hucksters at all. I'm not interested in whatsoever. Seakeeper biscuits and cake crews. Where, when, where do I sign? I'm there, I'm there. Oh my gosh. All right, well, my topic of the day, I'm trying to get to my topic of the day. Um, those of you who are still here, I, I, I commend you for hanging around for this whole thing. But uh, you guys started it. You, you started talking about topless cruises and, and away we went. Um, <laughs> but today, I was going to mention, uh, uh, I, I was really trying to figure out what I was going to talk to you guys about today. This morning, I had no idea. I had no idea what I was going to do today. And then about three hours later, I was still scratching my head going, there's, there's nothing going on. I, I don't have, that. there's no disasters. No, no ship has hit anything. Uh, you know, there's the odd, there's the odd story of a drunk person here and, and, and stuff like that. But I didn't have anything really going. And then I came across, uh, came across something and it reminded me about how the cruise industry is evolving and continues to change. Um, um, a lot of people, uh, who are probably under 40, um, I would say a lot of the folks under 40, they um, probably do not appreciate how sophisticated cruise ships are becoming. Uh, but probably in the next five years, I'll bet you that 25 to 40 year olds will be well aware of how sophisticated these cruise ships are becoming. Because again, if you talk to someone who's 28 years old uh, about going on a cruise, they'll go, I have my mom and dad do that. That's, that's for older people. Uh, you know, I, I'm 28. I'm a, you know, I, I like mountain biking and I, I like hiking, uh, you know, I like adventure holidays, and I'm not into this. Uh, you know, eating eating a buffet meal and 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 you know, getting drunk and then passing out in my cabin. That's not my style. Is is this? That's what we do. Maybe some of us do that. It's okay. Whatever. Anyway, um, the way cruise ships are, are are coming on, the new ones are coming on board. The uh, they're definitely cutting edge from a technological point of view because they are targeting. Not you and I. <clears throat> if you're my age, 62, I'm not being targeted by all the cruise lines. Uh, some of them target me, yes, but a lot of the cruise lines are targeting 42 year olds and 35 year olds because they want they want them to be the next wave of cruisers. And in order to catch these people, you're going to have to have amenities on these ships that will catch their attention. And <clears throat> I thought I'd mention today some of the cruise trends that are coming up coming along now and, and becoming more common and or will become common uh, within the next few years. Um, so I'll just mention here uh, cruise trends uh, for the next 10 years or so. Um, uh, they're talking about how uh, cruise ships just started a couple of years ago, but now it's in full force adopting uh, apps on the phones. Uh, they're now adapting apps on our cell phones uh, that we can use on board. And these apps will eventually allow us into our rooms where we can just wave our cell phone in front of our room key, a room uh, doorknob, and it'll let us in. Um, it'll allow us to charge uh, to our account whatever we want. Uh, we can probably wave the phone in front of a slot machine if we hit the code. Wave the phone; it'll credit the machine fifty bucks or whatever you want to play with. Um, spa access: if you have a spa card, uh, you're allowed to go to the spa every day for the, using the facilities there. Your phone will have an app. That again will allow you. Uh, the door will magically open when you hold the phone in front of the door. But if you've got a phone without the app in there, without the security code, you're not getting into the spa because you didn't pay for it. Pretty smart stuff. Exercise room. Uh, uh, there'll be there'll be um, uh, more sophisticated exercise rooms on cruise ships. Today it's like uh, wide open. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Going forward, that's going to change. I think. Uh, I don't think it'll be the same anymore. There won't just be an exercise room for the ship. No, there will be a specialized exercise facility, and you're going to need a pass to get into it. Uh, but you'll have paid for it, of course. And then certain decks, uh, as you know, uh, today um, cruise ships are becoming more and more segregated. I uh, just did that video this morning I just released talking about the Haven and other places like that where, where you have exclusive access. If you have a, you have a Haven Club card, have Haven access, you may only have to have your cell phone with you if, if that's what you have with you all the time or something like it. It might be a wristband. Um, it might be a part, it might be in your watch. You might have an Apple watch that you can put an app in there and you'll just put that in front of the door, whatever it is. Okay, virtual reality. Right now, uh, we see pictures uh, on the internet um, whenever we see an article about virtual reality. You've seen these pictures, you've seen TV personalities who try these virtual reality glasses. Well, they're not glasses. 
what they are are, are giant ski goggle looking things and sometimes their entire helmets with the ski goggle thing on the front and they the big cord hanging out the back that's an inch thick uh lately we've noticed um uh virtual reality glasses that can handle a cell phone like this where they attach this to the front of a uh, pair of glasses something like that you can i don't think you see it but you know what I mean? you know what i mean and the folks are looking through their the, these glasses at this phone and they see a virtual reality experience. This is going to be going by the way of the dodo bird. Uh, virtual reality is going to eventually be inside a pair of glasses like this. Um, the handles, the, the side handles might be a bit thicker and on the inside here or right on the outside here and here will be the batteries to power and will be the chip technology, which is wireless. This will be wirelessly connected, wire, wirelessly connected to a master unit just over there. And you'll put these on and you'll, you'll hit the switch and you will not see what's in front of you. You will now be in a virtual world. And they may look like sunglasses, so they won't have a clear look like this. And they may have a larger lens, uh, probably a little larger with a bit of a wraparound feature so that your eyes can go way over here your peripheral vision will see stuff coming at you or going away from you. If a, you see a, a car, motorcycle rider coming, you'll see him here and then you'll watch and you'll see them out of your corner of your eye going that way. It'll all be in this kind of technology here. That's what virtual reality is going for. It has to, it's, it's the direction it's gonna take. And you're gonna have two kinds of uh, usage or maybe more than two kinds of uses, usages for these. Um, on a cruise ship, you may have um, a scenario where you're sitting down in a chair, like a, like a massage chair, like a recliner type chair, and uh, they'll strap you in, <laughs> just like a roller coaster. And uh, you put the glasses on, and uh, everything you see, feel, and experience will be through these, but the chair's moving and tilting and lifting and going forward where you're literally face down on the ground, five feet off the ground, uh, with the, but the seat belts are holding you in place with the shoulder straps and so on. Um, you're gonna be doing that kind of an experience with these kinds of glasses. And the second one will be where um, you'll be doing uh, what's happening now on uh, the, the Mariner of the Seas and other uh, Royal Caribbean ships, where you're on a ride, you're on like a trampoline type ride, wearing virtual reality glasses, and you're bouncing maybe on the moon, or on a planet where there's only one fifth gravity, uh, there are going to be uh, moving experiences. It might be laser tag. You might play laser tag with other taggers, but the uh, the actual laser that you see, the, the, the so-called thing you're shooting, you can only see it through your glasses. You take the glasses off, you might see your friend over there, and they're just standing there looking at you, and you've got these little machines, and you point them at each other, and hit the button, nothing happens. Only when the glasses are on do you see the machines shooting lasers at each other um and then you see what the score is and you might see a radar uh, detector here where the good guys and bad guys are all this kind of stuff this is coming uh fast and cruise lines want in they want in badly they're not after me at 62 63 by the time they have this system up and running the way they want it i'll be too frail to use it uh i'm gone uh it'll be the 40s uh the 40 and 50 somethings uh, who are now in their 30s and 40s that's who they're targeting. They have got to attract that passenger, the husband, the wife, and their children to come on board. And that's what they're going to do. Something else you're gonna get used to is something called a Medi Spa. M-E-D-I Spa, Medi Spa. This is a, there's gonna be a lot of terms like this, similar to this. Wellness cruises are a, a new term that have come up lately. We're gonna hear a lot more about this sort of stuff where um, you're going to be able to go on a cruise. Um, I'm not sure which line. It might be a subsidiary line where, in effect, you're going on a cruise to get better. Um, maybe you're suffering from hypertension, high blood pressure. Um, you're overweight. Uh, you're not sleeping well. Uh, you've got, you know, you got issues. And um, you're working. You're still working. You're trying to survive. And it may well be that your boss, the company you work for, the medical provider you have uh, is going to send you on a wellness cruise. 
he used to be in the old days, uh, and I'm talking the 70s, the 80s, we used to hear about this all the time, where celebrities would be all burnt out, and they would be sent to a uh, fat farm, or they'd be sent to a uh, detox center, the Betty Fords. Uh, those are extreme cases for extreme issues. Here, we're talking about a wellness center where you're 50 years old, you're stressed up to here, uh, you're overweight uh, badly, and you're showing signs of stress. And uh, your insurance company doesn't want you to have a stroke because they're on the hook. And so they're going to send you on a wellness cruise because your doctor is telling you, <clears throat> you are stressed out, buddy. You're going to need to take three months off work for a stress leave. And one of the things I'm going to have you do is take a two-week wellness cruise. Um, and you're going to take one of these. Uh, these are going to be available for us. And um, on a wellness cruise, we will learn how to uh, cook, <laughs> how to prepare our food, what we should be eating and not eating how to prepare it. Um, we're going to learn, um, we're going to have workouts. We're going to learn about, uh, we're going to have seminars for um, for stress relief. We're going to have seminars as to how to be better sleepers, especially those of us who are having trouble sleeping. We'll be involved in yoga sessions. We'll be involved in special shore excursions that are tailored for the wellness crews where either we're on a bike ride to, to burn off some energy and then we're heading into a, uh, a therapy uh, a center for for hot water therapy uh, massage uh, uh, yoga salt baths uh, algae body wraps uh, de-stress programming is what this is uh, coming back onto the ship the the menu is completely tailored uh, for our needs but in our case our app on our phone will tell me this app will tell me for dinner tonight, you going to the buffet? Great. Uh, or you going to the restaurant? Fine. Um, when you look at the menu or you walk the buffet, above all the selections of food that you can choose, uh, you have to fill out this code. There might be five numbers on, on my code for tonight's dinner. There might be a six, a four, a three, a seven, a nine. I have to find a number six. Well, a number six might be a salad. So I'm at the salad bar, and uh, there are different numbers over all the different um, uh, items available, and I can pick sixes, all I want. Then I, I go for my second course, and I have to pick off uh, number fives and fours, fives and fours. That might be fish. That might be chicken. Prepared in a certain way with certain vegetables, and this is what I'm getting at. I'm talking about a diet that will be tailor-made to the patient so that by the time you get off that cruise, you're feeling better. You might be a bit lighter. You might be a bit fitter. You've been a better eater, I'll tell you that. You've, uh, you've had all kinds of treatments. Um, you've had all kinds of seminars. You're taking home with you in your phone and in writing probably your menu going forward, what you're eating when you get home, what kind of products you're going to buy at your grocery store from now on to keep this thing going. Um, wellness cruises. It's going to be a multi-billion dollar deal. Um, Weight Watchers International has teamed up with MSC to offer Weight Watcher cruises. There are two being held this year. They're both sold out. This is not a phenomenon. This is not a little, oh, it'll just be like a Ted Nugent concert, you know, like just once a year, three-day concert uh, for a theme cruise. That's all this is. No, no. There are going to be, I think, cruise ships that will be full-time Weight Watchers cruise ships. All year, they'll have cruises in the Caribbean, they'll have cruises off of Mexico, cruises in Europe that will be tailored to this lifestyle to help you help yourself. Um, I think it's going to be huge. This is going to be a really big deal. Our, we North Americans, uh, you know, we're overweight as it is. We're overstressed as it is. Uh, I think we could do well with something like this. Uh, Celebrity is offering something called Mindful Dreams. Um, it's a wellness program as well with their Canyon Ranch Spa. They have a brand uh, there called Canyon Ranch. Uh, they will be offering spa treatments, uh, instructional classes, lectures uh, for, for improving your sleep, improving your diet, all kinds of stuff. This is going to be part of the celebrity family of cruises coming up. Um, other features coming for, for future cruises, by the way, something called remote check-in. We have a, a little bit of it now early days, but it'll get to the point where remote check-in will be so thorough that you'll arrive at the terminal, you'll hand your bags to the SkyCab, 
Um, you'll then go right to security. You'll just check through the machine and you'll go right to the loading uh, loading area. Your phone will tell you what number you are for getting on the ship. It's all, it's gonna be that automatic. Uh, it's coming. Um, and something else that's coming, at me, it's, it's sort of available now and it'll become commonplace. It's called a geo tracker. We're all going to have a geo tracker. It's optional. You don't have to have it. But if you're mom and dad and you got two kids, you're going to have the geo tracker. The kids on their wristband, uh, you can track exactly where they are at any time, and they can track you. Uh, so when when uh, when your son or daughter needs to see you about something, they can get they can find you right away. They know where you are. The geo tracker will tell them where you are. Uh, they'll probably just go to the nearest TV screen in one of the elevator lobbies. And uh, they'll they'll put their geo tracker band up on the screen, hit the button, find so and so, and uh, they'll show you right there. The red dot is dad, and the blue dot is mom, or whatever. Mom is pink, and dad is blue. I don't know. And uh, they can figure out where you are. And the same for you. You'll be able to figure out where your kids are at any time, whether you want to see them or not. You just want to know where they are. You can figure this out. These are some of the changes coming to the cruise business. I'm just touching the surface on. Uh, but the wellness cruise area, I think this is going to be a huge, big deal for cruise lines because it's hitting a home run with people now who feel pretty stressed. It used to be that just going on a cruise is enough. Just go on a cruise and um, all I need is a week at sea, uh, a couple of islands, and I'll be just fine. Uh, I'll have absolutely no uh, no problem with life. Uh, everything will be great. Uh, not anymore. No, no, it's not that way at all. We've been complaining for years that we leave a cruise ship heavier than when we got on the cruise ship. And now the, the diet begins. Well, that's the stress. You get home and now I got to get back to work and I can't eat what I want to eat. It's not uh, not all that great. Anyway, we'll see how this all kind of goes as we go forward. Just checking my comments here to see if I've caught up with everybody. Um, I want to make sure I haven't missed anybody's comments. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, People talk about going topless. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> that's a sea keeper. Uh, hang on here. Um, uh, Brittany's saying, I'll never do an optional cruise, uh, optional clothing. I'm way too conservative for that. Um, uh, yeah, sea keepers, he's in for a biscuit cake cruise. Absolutely. Uh, Debbie Manuel, 138 uh, Australian New Zealand firefighters uh, coming to, uh, to, uh, to the United States, California. Uh, Seekeeper, be not ashamed to show what the Lord was not ashamed to give you. I was created in his image, and I am a gorgeous baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I just, uh, uh, let's see your, uh, let's see your MG Toe Cat. How about a cruise to Catalina? Um, what else is going on of here? Uh, people are asking or mentioning stuff, talking to each other, so that's why I'm not bothering reading these comments. Um uh, uh, MG MG does not like how Long Beach has turned into a cesspool. Richard, see, you can use that technology in wheelchairs, so it could be a race car simulation. Great for old people, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, laugh out loud, all cruisers are wellness cruises for me. There you go. I saw some European river cruises specialized in healthy cruises. Yes, uh, my, if my company will send me on a wellness cruise, I'm there, Sylvia is saying. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Cam is here, Ola Paul, uh, Sharon uh, and Blake saying no. Sylvia, uh, as long as someone is cooking the food for me, what I what do I care if there's no salt in the food? Laugh out loud. Wendy Thompson, Chevy first, the first of many for you. We hope uh, hope she has many cruises. Cat, I wonder if it's the same Canyon Ranch that is in the Lenox, is in Lenox, Massachusetts. Hmm. MG Toe, the ships will like it if the people ate less on a healthy cruise, but of course there will be the regular specialty dining venues will still be available, of course. Kat, uh, how sensitive are the metal detectors on the ships? I uh, I don't know. I'm sure they're just like airports. Cam, just going on a cruise is more than enough for me. Besides, the sadness in is in leaving, laugh on out loud. Um, Wendy is saying, I'm not doing a Weight Watchers cruise. No way. Uh, MG Toe, buffet, breakfast, Oatmeal, lunch, bologna sandwiches, dinner, chicken soup. <laughs> Tracy Dunlop, if someone else is paying for the wellness uh, cruise or a wellness cruise for me, I'll go. But if I'm paying for it, I'll just go on a regular cruise. Thank you very much. Um, well, there's a lot of folks who are taking these uh, wellness cruises by choice as a premium. They're, they're taking this cruise because the kind of food they're getting is premium uh, five-star dining. It's high-end stuff. 
but uh, it is the kind of food that, uh, uh, as we say, is, is good for you, but it's prepared in such a way that it's made to be delicious. Um, but there are those out there who, you know, have limitless dollars, can afford anything they want, and they watch themselves carefully because they know that if they just ate cake all the time, they'd balloon out, and they don't want to be doing that. They, they care about their lifespan and uh, uh, their appearance and how they feel. So uh, these wellness cruises are actually a premium cruise. This is not a uh, four-star schlep-type uh, cruise at all. This is six-star, five-and-a-half, six-star, and you're going to really want to be on it to be on it. Um, I doubt you're ever going to find a Weight Watchers cruise on sale compared to a Carnival cruise. I, I, I don't think so. This is not going to happen. I don't think there'll be enough uh, cabins available. Um, I, I can bet you that if Celebrity had one ship that they dedicated to just Weight Watchers programs, the number of people on board those ships will they'll be full. The, uh, the counselors on board and the motivational speakers on board, uh, people will be clamoring to get to these ships, to be on them, because they'll come out of the off that cruise all revved up, ready to go. I'm not talking about retirees necessarily. I'm talking about the 40-somethings, the 50-somethings who have got to go back to work. Uh, they'll come off these ships uh, ready to kick butt. Um, and uh, they'll have had a great, great time. Uh, there you go. Something new every day. Um, let's see here. A blah. I hate those. <laughs> Can't say. I tend to set those uh, set those up. Uh, Tom Henry, MG, as long as the soup is hot, I don't mind cold soup. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever way you want to go with it. Um, anyway, there you have it. The future, people, the future. Get your flux capacitor set up and move ahead about 15 years and tell me what cruising's like 15 years from now. Come back and tell me. Um, I think it's gonna be much more electronic and much more virtual reality. I can see the day uh, where we're gonna be at home, we're gonna be thinking about going on a cruise, and we're gonna be watching uh, our YouTube channel. We'll be watching our YouTube channel with virtual re reality glasses on. And we're gonna see a cruise, a, a video about Bruce uh, giving you a ship tour of a cruise ship, or someone like Bruce, because I might not be around down, down that far. Uh, but someone like Bruce will be giving you a ship tour, and you'll be wearing your virtual reality glasses as if you're there. And it may well be that someone like me has a helmet on that has all the cameras and sensors right around the perimeter of the helmet uh, and uh, just walking through the ship. And we will be able to sit here with the glasses and look sideways while the person's standing looking over there. We can look over there. We can look behind us. What's the person that's behind this guy? We can see it all in virtual reality. Rewind the video, watch it again, uh, or just let it run. And uh, that's how we're going to learn whether or not we want to go on the future Norwegian bliss 15, 20 years from now. Uh, we'll get a virtual reality ship tour that's virtual. That, uh, I think, will be common, completely normal, no big deal. Every eight-year-old is going to go, you're boring me, man. This is, this is old news. As an eight-year-old, I've been doing this all my life. You, you know, just show me something new, will you? Uh, but those of us in our 90s are going to go, I remember the day I used to watch this guy, Calgary, talk to me about cruise ships, and he said one day there would be virtual reality glasses on cruise ships, and I thought he was nuts. <laughs> I, I dumped them as a subscriber because uh, I didn't want to hear that anymore. <laughs> I lost another 10 subscribers. What can I say? It's uh, it's an addiction. I can't help it. Anyway, there you go. Um, folks, I hope you had a good one today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I enjoyed the commentary today. I got to tell you that. <laughs> uh, let's see your um, um, uh, cat uh, says, I am partially held together by metal. Uh, Kat, I think in the future, you're, you're not going to be uh, a big deal anymore. Uh, everyone will be held together by metal in the future. Uh, and chips will be held together by metal and and uh, memory chips and um, and uh, brains, uh, you know, enhanced memory chips. Who knows? Barb, I can't um, believe people will pay for the Weight Watchers cruise. People need to push away from the table and cruises for enjoyment. Well, Barb, um, I tell you, uh, there have been people going to what we used to call fat farms since the 60s and 70s, paying thousands a week to go to a fat farm for a six-week holiday. There are people in Europe that have been going to spas. Now I'll use the word spas as a code name for a fat farm 
in Austria, Switzerland, Germany, um, Poland, Czechoslovakia, France, Italy, for, for, for decades, decades this has been going on under the guise of it's a spa retreat and I'm going away for two months. I'm going for a spa. They come back 30 pounds lighter. They come back with massages twice a week. They went for hikes. They were uh, they're getting uh, they're getting uh, lessons on how to prepare meals when they get home. This has been going on forever. This is now just coming onto the cruise side, but in a high tech way. It's just going to be the modern way of doing it. So when these folks get off the cruise in their telephone or in their laptop, or um, uh, they'll have a website that they can go to and they can key into their account. The folks at Weight Watchers and Weight Watcher type companies, there's others. You know, if a Weight Watchers company is from Switzerland, it's fancy. But if from America, it just looks after fat people, right? It's all perception. Anyway, people will come home with a, with this website and this and they, and they'll key into their account when they get home, and it'll say uh, you're home. It's uh, Monday night, six thirty in the evening. You're back from work. This is what you should be preparing for dinner tonight. Here are your options. You need four number sixes for dinner. And they'll go into their fridge and they know what number sixes are because it'll tell them you need some chicken, you need some maybe broccoli or cauliflower or corn or whatever, whatever the vegetable is. And you need some fiber, you need some vitamin A, B, C, all this. It'll all be broken down for them because of the cruise. And they'll be signed into this thing. This is where it's headed. It's just natural. Nothing special. Um, it's not a downgrade. This is actually an upgrade. I, I, if I use the term Weight Watchers, though, I know you, there's a bunch of you out there going, oh, Weight Watchers. Oh, yeah, because yeah. we think about – a lot of us think about uh, Kmart shoppers for Weight Watchers. You can buy Weight Watchers food products at discount places. Think about, uh, think about uh, like a, a five-star uh, weight loss spa in Switzerland and in, in France and Italy. And think about that on a cruise ship. That's what I'm talking about. It's it's high end, absolutely high end. Um, what can I say? Uh, let's see here, Bonnie is saying to me, hey Bruce, I usually eat grilled fish and veggies and salads on cruises anyway. I'd be fine with healthy food. I choose the healthy options and that's what I like and I used to, I used to take the stairs. Well, there you go, um, Bonnie. Uh, you know, uh, when I'm on a cruise ship, I eat completely differently than I do when I'm when I'm at home, of course, because it's like a night out every night. But I too, after the second third day, I'm looking around. If I'm taking a buffet, lunch or dinner, I'm grabbing more salad than I normally grab. Uh, I don't have salad at home. I just I'm too lazy to make it. Um, I love having fresh fruit on a cruise ship. I, I don't eat fresh fruit at home. I just, just don't bother. I have to buy it bring it home, wash it, prepare it, then I can eat it. If I just got a can of peaches, I can just eat them. Uh, maybe not the best move. Whereas on a cruise ship, it's all done for me. They've done all that work. All that fresh fish is there. The, uh, the uh, broiled fish is here. The seared is here. The, you know, the, the vegetables that have been broiled and, and cooked and baked, and what, it's all there. And I can pick which way I want to go. Fried chicken? Or salmon. Well, 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 some days I love salmon. I don't eat salmon at home. I don't buy salmon at Costco and grill it in my house. I don't do that. I could, but I, I don't. On a cruise ship, I eat like – I feel I eat like a king. I think I eat better on a cruise in quality, especially with vitamins, minerals, fiber, and everything, than I do at home. That's just me. And I'm not in a program, but, but you know. Biscuits are biscuits. What can I tell you? Um, let's see here. Uh, Tom Henry, bye, Paul. Uh, bye, bye, Paul and Debbie and everyone else, too. Anyone want to stop by in Virginia? I need help mowing Saturday if the rain holds off. It's been like 60 days. <laughs> Got a big mowing job to do there, unfortunately. Paul Lugas, uh, Cat Rose, I have rods in my back, and I have no problems with the metal detectors in my, in my cruise. Uh, very good. Uh, Tracy, uh, thanks, Bruce. Good show again. See everybody tomorrow. And Jordan, great show as always, Bruce. And I, uh, and I'll have an awesome weekend. Bye uh, to everybody. MG Toe, a uh, cat just needs to pull some teeth. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, I know the feeling. I have mine done. Uh, Paula saying at uh, Tom Henry. Cat Rose, 
Uh, MG Toe, it's in my upper and lower left arm and my lower right leg. Uh, Debbie Manuel, great show. Thanks for the company while at work, everyone. Stay safe and see you all tomorrow or Monday. Uh, travel home safe, Brucey and Jen. Toodles by Ann. Aunt Bonnie is saying, Paul Wilgus and Kat, I have a five-level titanium plate and screws in my neck. I don't set off the metal detectors. How about that? Dom Henry, I just have a couple screws in my shoulder from a rotator cup repair. Everyone's got metal. How about that? Bonnie, a nice Switzerland retreat would, would be okay as long as I got a piece of chocolate. Well, you know, chocolate. Isn't that good for you? Um, let's see here, Bonnie. Uh, I'm the same way, Bruce. I love the giant salad bar and the beautiful fresh fruit. Paul Wilgus, I was the same on my cruise, Bruce. Bonnie, Bruce, I do not cook ever. So the well-prepared fish and chicken on a cruise, love it. Cat Rose, not sure what metal mine is as it was put in over 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, Cat, who knows? Uh, well, there you are. Uh, guys, um, the future of cruising and the present day of cruising, I think it's great now. I think it's going to just be great next year, next decade. I think it's going to be just as good, if not better. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to every day. Uh, today was a fine show. I thank you all for joining me. Thanks for uh, any and all thumbs ups. How did we do so far? 24 thumbs ups. Not so bad. If anyone wants to throw a thumbs up as they're heading home, please do so. I appreciate it. And uh, get a chance. Check out my video that I launched today. It was put on first thing this morning. It's all about the upper end suites on cruise ships. Last a little over four minutes. Hope you enjoy it. Give it a thumbs up. If you do, you know someone that would like this channel and what we talk about, tell them to subscribe. Put the button, hit the button there. Tell them to hit the button over there. If they hit this button right beside it, there's a little bell icon. If they hit that, they get a notification every time I make a new video. They should do that. Thank you for all your support for my channel, Picking Up Traveling with Bruce Merchandise, Amazon Affiliate Marketing, uh, watching my commercials and making donations to my PayPal account from time to time. Thank you all of you for all of that. Jen and I are much, uh, very grateful and we look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday, two o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time. I'll be on a little bit of cruise news, perhaps some trivia. Most likely we'll have some fun tomorrow. Stop by if you can and say hi, look forward to having you there. And then, for Monday, uh, we'll know uh, shortly what's going on. Are we on the air or not? Uh, otherwise, it'll be Tuesday. But uh, we'll keep you posted on what we know. And when we know it, in the meantime, have a pleasant evening. We'll see you all uh, tomorrow at 2 in the afternoon. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying, take care, everybody. This is August the 3rd, 2018. This show is over. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Bye for now. See ya.